welcome to Knit in the City. I'm Rebecca, the city's mama, and I am back with a regular episode where I talk about what I've been knitting, what I have finished, and what I'm planning to do next. So today is still going to be kind of special, and maybe not in a great way, because uh, what I have finished this month is mainly Christmas gifts. Uh, and that also means that I don't have the items here because I've gifted them uh, with a few exceptions uh, and also I have not been working on much else. There has been a few days gone after Christmas so there are a few of my whips that I had before, from before that I have been working on so uh, but a lot of the whips that I showed you in the last episode I have not been working on. Uh, so I do have a feeling that this episode will be a little bit shorter than usual. Or usual. <laughs> I've just one, done one regular episode before. It's going to be a little bit shorter than this one because I will show you pictures instead of the physical objects. Uh, I will start with finished objects. Uh, and the first things that I finished was the, uh, yeah, I was also, before I <laughs> just jump into the whole thing, uh, I was going to tell you that I will put the name of the pattern and the designer's name in the frame. And because I might not remember all the names. Uh, and also, if there is a yarn that I don't remember what it's called, that will be in the description box. I mean, the, uh, the patterns and designers will also be there, but apart from that, you can also see them on the screen. Uh, okay, <laughs> now I'm going to get into it. Uh, the first things that I finished uh, was the Christmas stockings for the kids. Uh, and I gave them to them before Christmas, of course, so that I could put presents in them. Uh, and these are made from different scraps of uh, DK worsted weight yarn. Uh, so there, it's mostly drops yarns. I think it's uh, the drops Nepal mainly. There is also a red yarn that comes from my Christmas sweater from years ago. I don't remember if I showed it here, but um, I can put a picture. It is uh, very small, doesn't fit me at all anymore. I checked out the Ravelry project page and it doesn't say what yarn this is, but I mean, it is a, like a regular wool yarn, like the, your run of the mill wool yarn uh, that I've used for the red parts. Um, so those are done uh, and the recipients uh, were happy with them. The next project is actually two projects and I do have them here and these are the fingerless mittens that I made for my boyfriend. Uh, I can show you both actually. And uh, I do, <laughs> so these take, um, these are made from Drops Alaska. Uh, Cause I had a lot of leftover Drops yarn that I bought uh, because they were cheap. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, Alaska is a bit pilly. Uh, I, the Nepal I really like. It has a bit of uh, alpaca in it as well. Uh, but this is a pure wool yarn. And um, I ran out, so I had to use a different skein that is obviously not the same color. I don't know if it's a different dye, dye lot or if it's a totally different yarn or a color or, yeah. Not sure about because this was just I just had a little bit, but he doesn't mind so and I didn't use a pattern for these. I just I cast on I think forty stitches around, and then this is a three one rib that I made. Uh, I also knit him a second pair, and these are also drops Alaska because I think these are very useful. I have a a wine colored pair that I've worn a lot during autumn when it's not super cold. It's actually not super cold now either. It's like eight degrees outside and the sun is actually shining, which rarely happens 
in December. So yay! Uh, <laughs> maybe that happened last time I filmed too. I always say never, no sun, no sun in December. <laughs> and then there's sun every time. But yeah, but this, these are black, so it's might be a bit hard to see. This is the same. I mean, I think I, these are only 35 stitches. And this is also just from the top of my head because it's just so simple. Um, but there's, they still fit. I mean, they are stretchy. Uh, and this is just plain stuck in it. And I just bound off. So they do roll a little, but I think that looks nice. Um, yeah, I made a lot, <laughs> a lot of these <laughs> because uh, I kind of panicked a bit because Christmas was coming and I was in a rush. Uh, I hadn't been knitting as uh, much as I was supposed to. Uh, so yeah, sorry to all the people <laughs> who got the fingerless mittens, but I think they're useful. So uh, hopefully they will be worn a lot. Uh, then I also made two pairs of um, snowshoe socks from Emily Foden's Knits, Knits About Winter. I love this pattern. I have talked about it before, uh, but for these, yeah, and I made them for my brother's girlfriend because she said she wanted them. Uh, she's a scout leader, so she needs warm socks uh, during winter. Uh, so I knit her two pairs and I used uh, my scrap yarn, my scrap sock yarn, uh, and you hold uh, two strands together to make these socks so they are a bit thicker, uh, which is good when it's cold outside. I, um, I use different colors too, so one of the pairs, I don't even know if I have photos, so if I don't, I'm really sorry, but I will describe them very vividly to you. So one of the pairs, uh, I held a gray yarn together with a, a self-striping in red, white, pink, and black. Uh, and then I swapped that for a yellow one when I ran out, and then a hot pink one. The second pair is a Christmas pair. They were also hold, held together with a gray yarn. Uh, and I think it's Arweta, the grey yarn. I had a uh, hundred grams of that grey yarn. So I used it for both pairs. And it's like a medium grey. And then I held that together with the uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas yarn. Uh, that is just striped in red, green and white. And I had two different pairs. Uh, not pairs, I had two different yarns from West Yorkshire Spinners. Uh, so one of them is the green is a bit lighter and in the other it's a bit darker and uh, The one with the darker green yarn also has little speckles on the white portion of the of the of the yarn <clears throat> So if I do have pictures I will put them otherwise you could just see them before your inner eye or something <laughs> uh, Yeah then I made a hat for my father, and I do have a picture of this. Uh, this is like the... I bought some yarn from a sale. This is the Ad Libris uh, Socky Plus yarn. Uh, I'm not sure if you could get it outside of at least the Nordic countries. Um, or Scandinavia, maybe. Don't know. Uh, but never mind, this is like a Aran weight wool yarn. It also has a little bit of nylon, so you can also make socks with this. Uh, and the hat is two by two, and the designer's name, I will write. Uh, so this is just a simple beanie with a folded brim. And as the name suggests, it's a knit in a two by two rib. Not much to say about that. I also made uh, matching fingerless gloves, uh, just from the top of my head, because it's very simple, uh, like I said before, uh, in the same yarn to go with the hat. And uh, they are also made in two by two rib. The next project uh, is uh, I made uh, 
fingerless mittens for my brother. And they are made in the same way as uh, these ones. It's a 3 1 rib. But the yarn is different. It's a Schachenmeier Big Merino, I think it's called. So they are a bit softer. These are, I wouldn't say that they're scratchy, but they're more like mid scratch. Uh, so those are a lot softer because, I mean, I haven't knit much for my brother, so I don't know how he feels about yarn against his skin. Uh, but I think he liked them. So, seemed to be a success. I mean, I guess he would have wanted something other than uh, a hand knit garment <laughs> or garment. It's not a garment, but like a hand knit thing. Uh, but yeah, that's what he got. And next, uh, I made three scrunchies for uh, the girls. Um, a white one that I knit in Sandness Alpaca. Or if it was mini alpaca, not sure. Uh, a, a purple one that I made in uh, Sandness a Baby Lanette. Yes, it's a baby wool. So it is merino, I think. I think it is a superwash because it's you're supposed to use it for baby clothes and they should be washable. So I'm guessing it's a, a superwash yarn. And I held it together with the drops of Paca uh, in another purple, like, it's a little bit, it, cha it doesn't change color, it's the same color, but it has different bits, so there's like dim dimensions to it. So the scrunchie is a little bit thicker than the other one. Uh, the last one I made, I made from leftover sock yarn, and it's probably the grey Arweta that I was uh, talking about before. Because, yes, it was leftovers from the, from the socks that I made. Uh, and I, the, I only had a little bit left, so I didn't have enough to finish the scrunchie completely. But I also had a little bit of darker grey sock yarn that I used for the last bit. And, uh, I mean, it looks fine. Uh, the pattern is the Luxury Mohair Scrunchie. And I have made a few of those before. It is super simple and it's a great way to use up your leftover yarn. Yeah. And they were greatly appreciated. That's what I put in the stockings, by the way. I have also made two Sophie scarves for my daughters. Uh, and now I feel like I might not have photographed those. But I will see what I have. And maybe I can ask them to send a picture. Uh, but it's a beige one. Uh, and that one I held Drops Fabel together with Drops Kid Silk. So this has a fuzzy mohair feeling to it. And it's a little bit bigger than in the pattern. So she can wrap it twice around her neck. I like the ones that are a little bit bigger. The second one is also made from Sandnes Alpaca, so that also has a bit of a fuss. This is a smaller one and I think it only goes once around her neck. Not sure. Um, but I mean, I have really enjoyed knitting the Sophie scarf. I didn't think I would like it because I really like huge shawls. But uh, I knit myself a grey one that I have been using a lot, especially when it wasn't so cold outside. Uh, yeah, and then I think that was all the Christmas gifts that I've made. And then I actually made something for myself because I, I don't remember if this was finished uh, in my first episode, but this is the Haven Shawl by Sari Nordlund. And it's too big to show the whole thing at once, so I will slowly show it to you. It's coming through the frame slowly. Uh, and this is a test knit that I did for Sorry. And was super excited that I was chosen. And I really love the finished result. I mean, the pattern is so pretty and it's super easy. And you can just, you, you just knit a few rounds and then you remember the whole thing. 
so it's much easier than it looks. Or maybe you're super experienced and can tell that it's super easy. <laughs> but yeah, so this is knit in uh, Clara by Parmin. And that is a uh, 55... Now I don't remember if it was the wool that was 55% or if it was the cotton. But it's 55-45. And one is cotton, one is wool. And I think that this yarn is discontinued, unfortunately. Because it's really nice. Uh, and... What I was going to say is that I wanted a beret to go with this because I had like four balls of yarn left over. This took six balls and I had ten. So I have made a Colette beret uh, and this is a free pattern. I have not yet blocked this because I am going to block it over a plate so that it gets the, the beret shape. Uh, I love this little knob. <laughs> Uh, so it doesn't look very beret -y when I wear it, but I am going to fix that. I like that there is part cotton in this yarn because it makes it less warm. And this was a really quick knit. I think I made it in two days or something like that. And this is a DK weight yarn. And it doesn't feel very woolly. It feels quite cottony to the touch. Uh, so if you're sensitive to itchy wool, this is a... Well, it would have been a good option if the yarn was still out there to buy. So <laughs> I take that back. Uh, and so I still have two balls left. So I was thinking to make a pair of mittens as well. And I think those are all the finished objects. Yes. And now I have, so the days that have passed after Christmas, I did get a, a little bit of knitting time. And I have done the sleeve of my polo shirt. This is also too big to show you properly. Uh, but, so this is finished, except for the polo neck color, color, not color. <laughs> so, and this is supposed to have a tubular bind off, but I mean, I don't know why the tubular bind off hates me so much because I have tried multiple times and I have watched different tutorials uh, and I, I mean, a, a knitting friend gave me a tip on a tutorial that she thought was great. Uh, I tried it. It still looked super wonky. So I gave up. And what I have done is an um, Icelandic bind off. It doesn't look exactly like the tubular, but I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, like so. It's a little bit like the tubular bind off. And this yarn is the Stay by Mary Noor. And this is uh, merino wool and alpaca. So it's super soft and it also has this soft fuss that the alpaca gives. And I think it's going to be super warm. So I'm just going to knit the collar and then this is going to be done. And I only have like a little over half a ball of yarn. So I'm really hoping that's all that it takes. Uh, yeah. The second project I have been working on, I haven't shown it to you here because I don't think that the pattern comes in any language but Swedish. So sorry about this, but I had to like fill this out a bit for it not to be super, super short. And this is the navel skirt. And it has a slit here. So I've done the front, I think, or maybe the back. Let's see. Uh, well, can't tell. It's the same on both sides. But I only have this little bit left. And this is the double folded edge here. And you leave a little hole here 
so uh, you can put some elastic in here. And this looks super tiny. When I hold it to my body, I have like this much body on each side. <laughs> so at first I was like, this is never going to fit me. So when I was like somewhere here or here maybe, because I am optimistic, I tried it on and it, um, it actually fit. And it didn't look, I didn't look like a sausage. So, I mean, I was really surprised. And so I went, and this is uh, Drops Lima. I mean, I'm sorry about all the drops, but I just, this is yarn that I bought like way back. So I have a huge stash of this. And when times are hard, like they're now, then you have to knit from your stash and that is what happens. But as soon as things get better, I'll start buying other yarn as well. <laughs> so this will not be a drops channel. Yeah, I really like the color, and I also think that these are going to be nice together. It would have to be really cold outside for me to wear this. But yeah. Uh, and that was all of the knitting that I have today. And I'm really glad that it's at least 20 minutes <laughs> worth of video. Uh, but my plans ahead... I have, uh, I mean, I didn't do a recap of the year because I feel like I've only, there's only four episodes out. So, and you haven't been with me on the journey. So I just felt that there was no real point of doing that. But I did set some goals for next year. And last, when last year started, I had, I think it was 39 or 40 UFOs. I know, shocking. I got that down to 20. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I some of them I was just uh, ripping out and some of them I finished. So I think it was a pretty good year. The problem was that I made some new UFOs. So now I have 29. So one of the goals that I have is that I want that to go down to 10 at the end of next year. So I only want to have 10 UFOs. And, and it, that might not sound very realistic, but I am definitely going to frog quite a few of those UFOs because it's things that I don't feel excited about anymore or things that are definitely not going to fit me if I continue knitting on them. I mean, some of them are really old and I've been lying around for years. Uh, I do have a plan to make an episode where I go through all of these UFOs I, and I will talk about why they have become UFOs and what my plans are for them. And I also am going to rank them from one to five, how much I want to knit them, I mean how fun it feels, and how much I want to own them. So each UFO will get two numbers and then I will just put those together and uh, the nine that are the highest ranking that will be my make nine for 2024 and then I was thinking uh, the nine with the lowest ranking they're going to be my unmake nine for 2024 and that means I'm going to frog them and I mean there are probably going to be others that I will also frog but that is the plan and that is uh, the next episode that I'm planning to make. So if you're interested, hang on. My other goals. Um, I have been working on a sock pattern. A very simple, nothing special at all. So I'm, I feel almost like embarrassed to say here, but uh, I was thinking that during some point at some point during the year I was going to publish it on Ravelry and it's going to be a free pattern so I don't plan to have any test knitting or anything like that it's just like just putting it out there and just for the heck of it so we will see what happens with that but uh, it's something that I would like to do uh, and then I also when I went through my project this year 
I noticed that I had only knit three cardigans and two sweaters during the whole year. And this is like my favorite type of knitting, the garment knitting. So I was a bit shocked that, that the number was that low. So I was thinking to also uh, focus more on garments uh, during the coming year. Uh, and that is also something that takes me to my next goal. Uh, and that is to knit from my Ravelry queue, because that has a lot of cardigans <laughs> and sweaters. Uh, so these are the things that I'm planning on doing. Uh, and I also made plans for January, where I and, I'm, and when I make my plans, I probably stole this somewhere, probably from Nitinati, because she plans her her her, knit, her knitting so neatly. Uh, so I was thinking uh, that the sweater that I'm knitting for my oldest daughter uh, in the the alpaca breeze yarn, the blow yarn, is. Uh, something that I, this is in the, so I put things in different, I mean, I, I am not explaining things very well here. I'm putting things in different categories. So I have a UFO category and I pick a few things to, to focus on during the coming month from each category. So a UFO category, a whip category, and then a new cast on category because I have to cast on new things because otherwise I will be so bored. Uh, and then I also decide on a few of those garments that I want to be finished by the end of the month. So in the UFO category, that sweater is something that I want to focus on because I was supposed to give it to her for Christmas and I've only knit this much. So that was totally unrealistic. The second UFO that I want to focus on is the No Frills cardigan that I talked about in my first episode and uh, where many of you were really kind and gave me advice on how to fix uh, the ribbing on the arm because it looked really bad. So that is the second UFO I'm going to focus on. Uh, the the whips that I will be working on is of course the polo sweater because there's so little left and I'm really hoping that the yarn will be enough so that I can finish this and wear it. And the other one is the navel skirt that I just showed you and this is just like so little left. So that will probably be finished. And then I also put the car sweater that I showed you last time. And I will put a picture because it's not nice to talk about things that you can't see. So I will put pictures of all the things. Uh, and then also the porcelain sweater. I only, I've only knitted this much, or I mean, I've knitted and re-knitted, but <laughs> this is as much as I have now. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, that's probably not gonna be finished, but I'm going to be focusing on it. Uh, and then new cast -ons. I mean, I actually cheated and cast on the Urania cardigan from Sari Nordlund's beautiful book, Softly Timeless Knits. So I am gonna count that as a new cast on because I've only made, I mean, it's just a little, it's the neckline here. So it's like a teeny tiny, it's a cable. Uh, and I was also planning on casting on the Storm Sweater by Petite Knit because I was weak and I bought the pattern <laughs> when uh, there was a craze. Uh, so I will probably, I have the yarn and everything. Uh, and the last thing that I will be casting on is something that I have been talking about for such a long time. It's the Persephone Mittens from Emily Foden's beautiful book, Knits About Winter. And if you watch the last episode where I talked about my favorite knitting books, you will have seen both of these books and the patterns that are in them. And if you haven't watched that, it's like a hot tip because all of these books are really nice. And what I want to have finished once January is over, that is uh, the sweater that I'm knitting for my daughter because I feel ashamed. Uh, it was supposed to be a spring thing. And yeah, 
it's gonna be spring again soon. So maybe I should wait. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna wait because it's super boring. So I just have to knit on. Um, I also want to be finished with the no frills. I do have both of the sleeves and it is like a thin sock yarn, small needles, one one rib, but still uh, this needs to be finished. And I really hope that uh, I can make it work. The third thing I want to be finished with is the polo sweater. And that is totally going to happen because I am so close. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, that was all I had for today. I wish you a great day. Check out the knitting book video if you want to be inspired. Uh, and I'm going to go out and enjoy the sun and see you in the next one. Bye, friends. Bye.